Rodriguez's body was located at the Trinity River on the U.S. Highway 59. Six days of searching, praying, hoping ends with the grim discovery. Authorities say cell phone analysis as well as video and social media helped them to pinpoint her location. The spot was also one of several given to authorities by Don Stephen McDougall. Based on all of the evidence that law enforcement has collected, they are in the process of preparing the appropriate arrest warrants for Don Stephen McDougall. At this time, we believe the appropriate arrest warrant is going to be for capital murder in the death of Audrey Cunningham. He is currently still in jail under an unrelated felony charge. Audrey was last seen in this Livingston, Texas neighborhood about 70 miles northeast of Houston at about 7 a.m. Thursday, state police say. But she never got on the bus and never made it to school that day. McDougal lives on the Cunningham family's property. The Polk County Sheriff says they believe McDougal was the last person to see her and says he admits to leaving the house with her Thursday morning around 7 a.m. And they would have made it to the bus stop just relatively, just a little under a mile in the same community, um, real close. Did anyone see her at that stop, bus no. stop? No other witnesses saw her at the bus stop. Sheriff Lyon says when Audrey was reported missing and the community started searching, McDougal joined in, appearing to help. He, and he's, he just happened in her search. What does and, that tell you? Well, I mean, it, to me, it simply tells me is that he's trying to uh, give the appearances that he has no play or he's not at fault in her disappearance and that I am part of the, the concerned party parties who are trying to locate her. Do you believe um, that? No. No, I don't. Sheriff Lyons took CNN to the area where authorities recovered a key clue in Audrey's disappearance. He says authorities located the girl's bright red Hello Kitty backpack near this dam Friday. Just a little west of us here. Was it in the, the water? No, it was along the riverbank. There was enough in it to lead us to believe strongly that it is Audrey's backpack. That it was hers. What about signs of struggle or blood or any other DNA? No, ma'am. There was no signs of struggle there. 11-year-old Audrey has touched the hearts of many, including law enforcement in this community. Have you cried over this? <laughs> several nights, several days. Yeah. So I have kids of my own. I feel that pain that they're feeling. And I talked to Audrey's mom this evening, and she says that reality has not sunk in. That's how she described it. She says that she is still processing the reality of living without her daughter and that she's going to need time, that she's going to need a minute. But when I talked to her yesterday, she described her daughter as a beautiful little girl. And what she asked the public for were prayers and positive energy. And Anderson, like every journalist covering the story, I also have to tell you a little bit about the suspect. We have exhausted efforts to try to get comment from his family and we have scoured court records to try to find his attorney if he has one. We have not been successful.
he treated an 11 year old little girl behind closed doors. This guy had full access to the home of an 11 year old girl, a guy with a very lengthy rap sheet, including, boy, this is like putting perfume on the pig, enticing a child, another little girl. He got into bed with her and wrestled off her underwear and PJs. He had access to her home too. And now Audrey is dead. This guy, in the last hours, we learned, will not even put on his clothes to come before a judge. This, as we also learn, man, this guy, he should win the Oscar because he managed to put on quite the show going door to door, knocking on doors, saying, have you seen Audrey? I'm looking for Audrey, knowing full well, according to police, that he had murdered her by blunt force trauma to her head. Her pants found far away from her body at the river's edge. Her body tied to a rock by a rope. And according to Tim Miller from Equisearch, her body was caught in an eddy, just swirling round and round and round and round. Yeah, him. I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. Before I address McDougal butt naked wearing nothing but all of his hate tattoos, to go in front of a judge like that? And they try to get him to get dressed. He won't do it. That said, before I get to a naked McDougal going door to door, hey, have you seen Audrey? Knowing all the while he killed her. Before I've got that, that. Yes. Is, he's Audrey's mom, Miss Matthews, sound so she can hear me now. Right now is Audrey's mother. There's been a lot of speculation about her. A lot of mean things have been said about her online. I want you to meet Cassie Matthews. Miss Matthews, thank you for being with us. We've heard a lot from Audrey's grandparents with whom this sweet little girl was living with a child sex offender in the backyard. We've heard a lot from them. But, you know, I knew, I thought, I knew it all about suffering, about grieving, about mourning. After my fiance was murdered, when I gave birth to the twins, I found out I don't know anything. And Miss Matthews, I can't tell you how much we've been praying for you and how sorry we are. And I know that means nothing. I almost hate to even say it, but I want you to know our whole staff has been thinking about you and praying. And I want to thank you for being with us right now. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just, I, I want to do everything that I can um, for my Everyone joining me is Cassie Matthews. This is little Audrey Cunningham's mother, Audrey, 11 years old. This mother is broken. You can see it in her face. And you'll hear it in her voice. When she was killed. Audrey, when I look at her, Miss Cassie yeah. is just so full of joy and life. I'm looking at a picture of her now with a little white t shirt. And she looks just like her mom. She looks the spitting image of her mom. on with the blue sundress over it and now she's got on a little black t-shirt and looks like a little pocketbook strapped shoulder over her shoulder she's just so precious and looks so well taken care of how in the hay do you believe this happened miss matthews i i don't understand um how it happened at all. I don't understand how they put so much effort into keeping from me, but they couldn't put the same effort into knowing the people that they had around her. 
Miss Matthews, what happened when you discovered that Audrey was missing? How did you find that out? Or did you know that before you found out that she had been killed? Um, so it was Thursday evening, uh, it was like seven. Um, Tabitha herself had uh, gone and contacted um, or went to the home of my fiance's mother and was asking her if she knew where we were, if we were there and had said Audrey was missing. Now his mother instantly calls him, of course. Um, and she, she, she makes her uh, get on the phone with me and she's uh, telling me that she's missing and asking me if I had seen her. And of course I, no, I haven't seen her. Um, I honestly wanted to ask her if it was a sick joke, but I, I didn't. And I'm used to a lot of um, crazy uh, things from that family. So, so um, when she said, no, she's, she's missing. So Cassie, you said that the paternal grandmother, Tabitha went knocking at your fiance's mom's door looking for Audrey. Did they call you immediately? Um, of course, uh, my fiance's mom uh, called him instantly. Um, and she told him that I needed to be on the phone ASAP. Uh, and then she put Tabitha on the phone and made her talk to me. Why um, didn't she want, I mean, I would think she would have called you first. Had they been blocking you seeing Audrey? I, I haven't had any type of contact. Um, I had the last bit of contact that I, I had with Josh where I was once again begging to see my daughter um, in any way that made him or her comfortable, uh, whatever I needed to do. I had to do that through my fiance's messenger. So the grandma shows up at your fiance's mom's place looking for Audrey. Then your fiance's mom has her call you. And what did she say? She, um, tells me that she's missing. She didn't make it home off the bus. Um, asked me if I had seen her, which that's a crazy question because you haven't allowed me to see her in so long. Um, and after that, I had told her, uh, about how Steven had messaged me strangely out of the blue the night before and that I would share the messages with her. And then I asked her where Steven was and she went from a- Are you referring to state. the defendant, the murder defendant, Don Stephen McDougal, age 42? Is that who you're referring to? Yes, that's who I'm referring to. When they asked, where's Audrey, what did you say? I, of course, uh, I haven't seen her. And in my mind, I nap and tell her, of course, I haven't seen her. You and your, your son haven't let me see my daughter in how long now? But I didn't uh, because I instantly wanted to know where my daughter was. That was the that was the thing that took over. Um, I you also asked the you also asked the grandma where is Stephen and we yes, yes I did. Stephen I had told her about Why? The, him messaging me. I had told her about him messaging me um, out of the blue the night before, and told her that he had said to me that he was going to take her to school that morning. And I asked her where he was and had she seen him. And she went from hysterical to stuttering. Um, um, I, I got to go. You, you told me, you told me earlier, she went, she went from calm to hysterical. No, 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 no. She went from hysterical to stuttering. Um, and she had to go. Oh, as soon as she realized that Stephen McDougal had been with yes. Audrey, she had to go and hung up the phone. It was her stuttering the word. Um, she didn't have anything else to say other than I got to go. Now in the 911 call, you can clearly hear him in the background. Guys, we are speaking with Cassie Matthews. This is Audrey Cunningham's mother. What happened after that? 
after she hangs up, what do you do? I, I'm about to melt down. Um, I, I prayed. Uh, my fiance is uh, sitting there trying to comfort me, but I didn't even want him to touch me. I, I didn't understand what was going on. I'm, I'm pacing um, a rut in my house, just wondering where she could be, where I could look, what I could do. Um, I'm waiting for the officers. Um, when officers finally showed up, they asked if they could uh, search my home. And of course, I, I asked them if I needed to step outside, whatever made them more comfortable. But I wanted them to go ahead and, you know, get that done and start looking for my baby. Now, I tried to ask a couple questions and they just kind of looked at each other after they searched and were like, okay, it's all clear. Let's move on. And then left. Nobody really answered any questions for me for a long time. What was the next thing that happened in your world? Well, the next thing that happened was I am being advised that uh, it would probably be best. Well, advised, but not advised, which makes no sense to me. But that that is what has been said, um, that I should stay put in my own home. Uh, and then shortly after that, I, me, my fiance, uh, the roommate that we have at the time, uh, we're getting picked up by the sheriff's office and, and, you know, investigators. We go and we spend, I think it was almost 16 hours up there. Uh, now the entire time I'm being asked 20 million questions, uh, that I'm able to answer with no problem. Um, they, they keep trying to say to me, I feel like there's something you're not telling us. I, I feel like there's something you're not telling us. Well, finally, I okay, hold on for a second. Who took where? Um, and they had a few of the investigators with them. They took us up to took you the where? County Sheriff's Department. So you were there, your fiance was there and your roommate was there and they were peppering you with questions really about where's Audrey? When have you last seen her? Did you take her? Did you hide her? Questions and, that and about the correct? messages between and about the messages between Stephen and I from the night before. And they were asking me if yes. I you now, know. that's very curious, Cassie, because I find those text messages that McDougal sent you very, very incriminating for him because he is playing on your emotions he knows how much you want to see audrey so basically cassie mcdougall is using your daughter as bait to lure you down to the river where her body was later found why um, is he doing that and claiming he was going to keep it secret from her dad what what was he what was his game? Well, uh, when he first approached me, um, and and see, when I say approached me, um, it was all through Facebook message. I never had his number or anything like that. But he had said that um, he was Audrey's babysitter, which was instant red flag. I didn't understand. Um, but he had said that he wasn't going to pick parents' sides, that he was concerned about what Audrey wanted and how she felt and that he thought it was wrong for her to be um, kept from me if she wanted to know me. So he played on the fact that I, I was desperate for anything. I wanted pictures. I wanted, I just, anything uh, that had to do with my daughter. And for a minute, I could have believed that, but then I thought more into it and I just knew something was wrong. And I had been speaking to my family about it. I'd been telling my, my fiance told me from the jump not to associate with him in any way. Do not. But he doesn't understand how I was feeling when I just, I, I was craving something, something of my daughter. Um, Did you have any idea this freak was your daughter's babysitter? Not until he had messaged me and uh, I had tried to contact Josh uh, wondering what the is going on and um i asked my family over and over again if they could try to contact and they tried to get no answer i wanted to know why a man that nobody knows is being left with my 11 year old daughter 
or I mean, he, he could have chose anyone else under the sun and it would have been okay. Uh, but when he invited me down to go fishing to see my daughter, um, well, for one, I, I knew better. Uh, but at this point, knowing what I know now, I feel like he did something to Audrey Wednesday before he even messaged me. And that if I would have went, um, he would have what gotten rid of me as well. And then it would have been chalked up to I kidnapped my daughter and I ran with her. And people would have forever been looking for two people that don't exist, not looking in a river. So you have a bigger plan. Why do you believe, Cassie, he needed in his mind to kill Audrey? I don't. I don't understand that um at all actually i can understand a little bit of hatred that he would have for me um because i would be the only person that could remove her from the home you know where he he was already uh, residing i have no idea why he felt the need to i actually you know what um and this is oh my god it makes me sick to my stomach to say but I think that in a pedophile's mind, they, they see a child and they see their, their actions as um, an adult would see another adult. Okay. Um, I feel like maybe he was in love with my daughter and he thought that maybe at one point she did say that he was her favorite person or something like that. Maybe he was good to her, but she was looking at him as nothing other than an uncle, uh, the way a child should, you know, if, if at most. Cassie, but what if do you in, believe he, he had already? What if he tried to make an advance on my daughter and and he didn't get the reaction that he wanted? He either snapped or he knew that she would tell. That is what I, I think. Do you believe he had already molested her? I don't, I don't know. Do you know that I didn't find out that her pants were on the, the bank until I watched your interview with Tim Miller? Yeah. And you know what, Cassie? I didn't know either until I was talking to Tim Miller and he told me live at that moment. I didn't know that either. And it felt like a knife in my heart. How I'm did really you... trying to hold it together? I I'm, I'm sick. sorry, Cassie. I'm I am so sorry. I, I, I don't understand. Cassie, how did you learn that they had found Audrey? Um, a lady from the sheriff's department. Uh, one of the the jailers, I believe, uh, was sent to my home to tell me and to sit with me until um, a family member had some type of support. Uh, they weren't supposed to leave me alone, um, and they didn't. Uh, she she was really good to me, but I just knew in my stomach when my fiance come to the room because I hadn't gotten out of bed, um, I, I was just stuck in my bed when he had come to me and said that there was a lady from the sheriff's department at the door and that they, they needed to speak with me. I, I knew, I knew in my, and, and you know honestly, what, Cassie, I, I don't know how, how people know that, but I don't know that I, I knew, I knew he was dead. I knew right then. So when you hear there's a sheriff lady at the door, you knew that Audrey. I was knew gone. my stomach dropped. Uh, my heart, i uh, just. Everything just stopped for a minute, honestly. Um, and I, I felt like I couldn't breathe when she told me I. I didn't. What did she say? Did she reveal anything? No. Um, she just she looked me uh in my face, asked me to sit down, and then she said, 
this is not news that I, I want to be giving you right now. And I just, I started bawling. And she, she was like, yeah, you know, baby, you know. And then and she was right. I, I, and honestly, um, I still don't know how to process any of this. If you want me to be, um, not truthful, I, um, am in search uh, for a therapist at the moment. So I'm I have been a manic depressant with extreme anxiety since I was 15 years old. I am so scared that this is going to be a depression that I can't get myself out of. I, I feel numb. I don't, I don't feel much of anything else at all. I feel numb. I don't sleep. I don't, I just sit there and I watch videos and look at pictures and, and I read all of these comments on the internet and, and that's all I can do. All I can do is just put all of my thought into this in general. I, I, I can have someone sitting right next to me and they're talking to me and I don't hear a word that they say because I'm just. I see, I'm going to hook you up with a therapist. I've got, I've got somebody for you, a lady for you to talk to and I'll hook you up with her in just a few moments. Cassie, did you have any idea about McDougal's record. Why was he living in the backyard right have access to the home? So I um, had no idea until I made the Facebook post and people started commenting because as much effort as they put into Keeping me away, I figured they would put the same type of effort into knowing the people that were around. If I would have known that I needed to do her father's job because he didn't give a to do it, I would have known. But I knew. I I've knew got a question for you, Cassie. Right. You said that as soon as you told your fiance he wants to meet me down by the river and he's going to bring Audrey, your fiance immediately said, do not talk to this guy. Stay away from him. Did your fiance, did everybody know this guy was bad news? Why would he say that? He did not like the fact that it, he was like persistent on um, trying to get me alone. He said that he had a bad feeling um, about him and that there just something wasn't right. And my fiance is an excellent judge of character. He really is. He was right. Question to you. Did you discover that McDougal was actually going door to door like he was looking for Audrey? That that's the part right there that um, just infuriates me uh, to the point where I could put my hands around his throat and squeeze and not stop. <laughs> How do you know damn good well what you did to my daughter and then you and then you search for her like you care you don't care you killed my daughter and then and then you want and then you want to search for her. It's, it's, when you it's found sick. out that audrey was missing he killed the reason he went door to door was to see what they knew. He wanted to know what people knew, what they saw, when they saw it. That's why he was out there going door to door. And McDougal writes, he was taking her to the bus. Did you ever text him or call him and say, where's Audrey? He messaged me, actually. Story. And he said, hey, have you seen Audrey? She didn't make it home off the bus. And I said, where the f is my kid, Stephen? Because I just, I, I knew. I... He was trying to cover his tracks. I wonder if he was trying in some way to set you up. I, I can't figure it out. But I guarantee you this, Miss Matthews, I will I'll figure it out. I will figure it out, and I want you to know not only are we praying and thinking about you. And this lady here, Nancy Grace, 
she will figure it out. She'll leave no stone unturned. We're not letting go of this until this guy gets a I Texas don't... death penalty. Can I, can I be honest? I oh, know you, you don't care if he gets the death penalty. Other people do. I actually don't want him to receive the death penalty only because I'm not, I am not God. It is not my place to, you know, judge when somebody else's life ends. Um, and that to me is an easy way out for him. I have to live with the fact for the rest of my life that I will never see my daughter again. The things that happened to my daughter. And I feel like he should get life without parole. So he has to deal with all of the repercussions every single day for the rest of his life. Just Yes, but the thing is, being in prison for the rest of his life, he'll be able to use the internet. He'll be able to make phone calls. He'll be able to keep in touch with his family. Everything. Yeah, okay, well, I hope to God if he doesn't get the death sentence and he does have to do life in prison, that there's some karma comes his way. I really do. As well. Do you think he cares? Do you th think McDougal no, will that's sit the in thing. jail and feel sorry? No, see, that's the thing. And let me tell that's you something. Thing, he can get never, right with God him. on his way to no. hell. I never expect him at all to even have any type of remorse because you can see it in his face, the type of monster he is and the things that he did to my daughter. But the other people that he will have around him will damn sure make sure that he does not enjoy a single minute of it. Miss Matthews. I want you to try, and I know these are just words that don't mean anything. You've got to stay strong because you've got to make sure there is justice for Audrey. You have got to stay I, strong. Don't fall into that depression and spiral down to where you can't get out. You've got to be her mom now and stay strong and be her voice because nobody else has been her voice. And now it's on you, Cassie. You've got to be her voice. And you can do I that. failed my daughter Thank once for... by being bullied into submission and being made to believe that she was in a good home, but I will not fail my daughter again, Nancy. That's go down, you girl. Everybody thinks that I don't care, that I'm I'm just shrugging it off. Um, oh, she's not crying, she's not this, that. she's not that. No, I break down in my home where I'm comfortable. My grieving is not everyone's business, but what is everyone's business is the fact that. This isn't over and things need to be done concerning my daughter. So if I got to keep a straight face and I got to, I got to look heartless for it, well, so be it. But if I'm sitting there breaking down. Who cares what they think? Done. Who cares what they think? All that matters now is what God thinks and getting justice. That's all that matters now. Yes, ma'am. Cassie, thank you for being with us. Have a great day. Yes, Man, thank you so much for everything that you've done and how much effort you've put into this. It means a lot to me. Um, I appreciate your your realism. Uh, you're straight to the point. The fact that you're not um, you're not just trying to be somebody's best friend. You are in the interest of the child. You know, my child. Yeah. That's and I appreciate all of the information that I have obtained from you, whether you knew you were giving me the information or not. Uh, I just appreciate you in general. Um, thank you so much. Thanks, Cassie. Now joining me and all our panel to make sense of what we know right now. But before we get going with them, you've got to hear it from the horse's mouth. Take a listen to McDougal as they're trying to get him to put his pants on to appear before the judge. Right. Now, I, I'm going to stop it there because I've got this one. Right. We'll go back to that in a minute, but this is the better one because she don't show the full, right? 
shocked that Don McDougall, charged with the brutal murder of 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham, had taken off all his clothes. Come on. JP wants to talk to you. Where's your clothes? Hold on. <laughs> well, put your smock off for Well, come on out here. No, 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 man. Come on, man. Don't disrespect me like that. All right, well, wrap up in that. Wrap up in the blanket. Come on. Come on. McDougal, seemingly wearing a smirk on his face, walks over to the Justice of the Peace to hear the charges against him. You have the right to remain silent and not make any statement at all. I know that any statement that you make can will be used against you at trial in court. You have right to have an attorney present to advise, her, to advise you prior to or during the questioning. McDougall is currently facing an aggravated assault charge in addition to the capital murder charge in the killing of little Audrey. This arraignment, though, is only for the capital murder charge. You have the right to terminate any interview at any time, and you have the right to any trial if you're accused of a felony. Do you understand your rights, Mr. McDougall? Yep. Okay. Do you want a court appointed attorney? You're going to hire your own. Nope. Which one? I don't need an attorney. You're going to hire your own? Yep. Okay. All right, all I need you to do is sign right here for me. Your charge is capital murder and it's a no bond. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, and with that, this entire interaction. See, even there, he didn't seem bothered by any of that. Didn't seem bothered by it. It's as though he knew it was coming. You know what I mean? He is, and it isn't an act. He isn't putting, he isn't, he isn't, he hasn't got um, mental issues, health issues, or anything like that. So don't even go down that road with me. He does not have any issues. It's, it's a put on. It's like, Oh, I'm going to sleep. So he's undressed himself, got under the blanket, and then, oh, well, I've got to go and sleep. Well, you know what I mean? It was just him being him. That is him. Now, if that's what it's like going to see the Justice of Peace, or whatever it is, right? What was he like in his own home? What was he like around that 11 year old? And the grandparents, they knew. They knew what it was like. Because like the mother said, as soon as she mentioned that uh, young McDougall had been with her daughter, right, she, she stuttered and then kind of hung up on her and left, right? So it's just unbelievable. The way he acts, the way he tried to cover up his actions by going door to door. I will show you a case on here. One of these days, I'm going to do the case. And the guy's being convicted of it, right, already. But we'll run through it and you'll see what I mean by how he was putting himself into the... Uh, investigation so you could keep up with what they knew where they'd been where they'd looked everything anyway so what this one <laughs> no we don't need that one right yeah we've got to read through of what actually was said okay and some pictures right share this it, it, it says it appears in court naked it didn't go to court it was brought out of his cell took up to the reception area the booking area read his rights told of his charges and signed a piece of paper and off he went back to the south. He wasn't in court. So that's just like, oh, he showed up naked in court. Oh, got to watch that. And it, to me, that's like clickbait. Click on it because, oh, you think you're going to see someone, someone in court naked. 
I'll tell you something at once. I watched the court uh, judge, and there was a woman up in front of her. And uh, this woman had no bottoms on, nothing on. And it come out that uh, she wasn't given any by the prison. Right? And she said that she wasn't the only one that hadn't been given any full proper prison clothing. So the judge asked them to take her back out and find her some appropriate clothing for her. And in the process, she gets onto the, the jail to phone them up. And she said, like, this will be looked into more. I'm not having this. And all this like, she was not happy that this woman was brought over from the jail up to her courthouse with no bottoms on. So, anyway, we're going to read this. Man who killed girl found in river appears in court naked. He didn't go to court, as I said. He didn't, wasn't in court. A man accused of killing an 11-year-old girl while taking her to a school bus stop refused to wear clothing to court. He didn't go to court and showed up covered only in a blanket. You'll see, it, as you've just seen, it wasn't in court. And that's what annoys me when people put headlines like that. I'd already seen the video, so I knew the truth. So that headline didn't think, I was just looking for the video again, for tonight, for the show on here. And I've I seen that headline, I thought, well, they're going to have it on there. You know what I mean? Don Stephen MacDougall, 42, was charged with murdering, unaliving, I should say, Audrey Cunningham, whose body was found in the Trinity River in Texas last Tuesday. So it's been over a week now. MacDougall, who was a friend of Audrey's father, was was pulled from his prison cell for his arraignment on Wednesday. His arraignment was at the desk where he was charged and che um, checked in and charged the first time. Polk County Sheriff's deputies found him fully naked when they opened the door to his cell. Come on, JP wants to talk to you. A deputy says in a two minute long body cam video obtained by ABC 13. Where's your clothes? Hold on. MacDougall, who has tattoos across his body, including eight scared on his chest and a swastika on his left shoulder, says, I ain't got no clothes. The deputy replies, Well, come on, out here. Well, no. Oh, no, man, come on, man. Don't disrespect me like that. Well, wrap up in that. Wrap up in the blanket. Come on, come on. MacDougall smirks and has a blanket wrapped around his waist as he walks up to the Justice of Peace, who, as I said, is at the checking desk, where they check them all in when they come into the prison, into the jail. Justice also asks MacDougall if he has his own attorney or want a court appointed one. You're going to you're going to hire your own. All right, I need you to do all I need you to do is sign right here for me. Your charge is capital murder, says the justice. That's no bond. McDougal remains in jail and public records did not indicate if he had an attorney. Audrey was last seen on February the 15th when she left home around 7am with MacDougall, who lived in a camper on a family's property near Lake Livingston. She, made it, she never made it to the bus stop and MacDougall joined in on the search for her. Here are his pictures. Come on, JP. Come on, JP wants to talk to you. Where are your clothes? Hold on. I ain't got no clothes. Oh, come on out here. Well, no, no, man, come on, man. Don't disrespect me like that. Well, wrap up in that. Wrap up in a blanket. Come on. Right, McDougall was arrested in Audrey's disappearance shortly after her body was recovered. He also appeared shirtless in his booking photo. 
revealing his tattoos. Such a hard man, isn't he? The capital murder charging document for Dougal Stegger and plant recovery of the child victim's body. Law enforcement discovered a large rock tied to the child victim's body. The rope was consistent with rope that was observed in MacDougall's vehicle. The document states. I've got that document. And we'll read it in a minute. MacDougall's case is set to be presented to a grand jury. We'll make it quick. You know what I mean? I don't think there's anything else. No. Right? So... He, he wasn't in court, he was just brought out of the cell, walked up to the desk where Justice of Peace was, who read him his Miranda rights, read him the charges, well, told him what the charge was, capital murder, and there was no bond. And that was it. Signed a piece of paper, went back to his cell. So that headline, he, this headline, well, this headline up here. Man who killed girl found him with a piece of cool. It's just clickbait. Because I can guarantee you people, oh my God, click, 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 click. Click on that, click on that, get that info. To be disappointed because he wasn't in court. I'm not so disappointed, but he wasn't in court. Right? I'm going to pull up the document, which I've got my downloads. Um, yeah, <sighs> come on. So I've just got to go to the top, right? Let's see if we can get in a bit closer. Well, I can't seem to get anything else. Right. It says, State of Texas, County of Polk, before me, the undersigned magistrate of the State of Texas, on this day, personally uh, appeared MacDougall John Stephen, in the custody of, police of, of a police officer, and said person was given the following Warning by me. Warning, part time. You are charged with the offence of C part B and an affidavit charging you with the. Well, well, it's just telling you everything is gone, right? You have no right to. You have the right to stop any interview or questioning any at any time. You have the right to have an attempt to be examining trial in. Felony cases only. Right. You have the right to request the appointment of an attorney if you cannot afford one. Does not apply to Class C, misdemeanor offences. Reasonable assistance is available in completing the necessary application and financial statement for the court to determine if you are indigent. Indigent. You have the right to remain silent. You are not required to make a statement. And any statement you make can and may be used against you in court. Right? Capital murder. It's a no bond. No bond. Seta. No bond. is not getting out. Okay? So if you hear of anyone saying, Oh, he's out, he's out, he's got, he managed to get bond. Don't believe it unless you see it on written paper like this. Because if I hear anything like that, the first place I'll be going is to my side to find out how we got bound. Right? Offence, capital murder of person, 10 year old, 10 year, 
10 years of age to 15 years of age. Capital felony. CJ. Is that me or S? Um, CJ, L, S, what about? 099903. Oh. Right. Let's see if I can get this. Mm, why can't I get it to go bigger? I'm oh, so annoying. Right. Before me personally appeared the undersigned African detective Kayla Hempley, who after being by me due to swarm, disposes and say that John Stephen McDougall, that's all heading, his date of birth, right? Who is ill after style defending on or about February the 15th, 2024, and before the making and filing of this complaint, County of Polk in the state of Texas did and then and there intentionally and knowingly caused the death of an individual, namely Audrey Danielle Cunningham, 10 years of age or older, but younger than 15 years of age, by unknown means. The the affiant being identified hearing as Detective Kayla Hempley, employed with, Polk, with the Polk County Sheriff's Office Criminal Investigation Division. Detective Hempley has over six years' experience in the field of law enforcement. Your affiant has specialised training in the field of murder offences, assault, sex crimes, crimes against children and other felonies offences. Affiant or whatever shall show that on the morning of February 15, 2024, Polk County Sheriff's Office Detective Investigation has revealed that said defendant, John Stephen McDougall, along with the child victim, left the home of the child victim located at, and we know where that is, in the Lake Livingston Village, subdivision in Livingston. Polk County, Texas. MacDougall and the child victim left in MacDougall's 2000, 2003 Chevrolet Suburban with intent to drop the child victim off at the school bus stop near the entrance of the subdivision. It was discovered the child victim, victim was not at the bus stop when a Livington ISD bus driver arrived at the location and discovered that the child did not make it to Creekside Elementary that day. Affiliate show shall show that on February the 20th, 2024, the body of the 11-year-old victim, Audrey Danielle Cunningham, was located during a search of the Trinity River. Law enforcement dive teams located the child's victim body within the Trinity River near State Highway 59 South at the Polk San Jacinto, Jacinto County Line. San Jacinto County Justice of the Peace, C. McGee, ordered the child victim's body to be transported to the Harris County Medical Examiner's Office autopsy and to, and to determine the cause of death. God, yeah. Oh, God. I've had to be someone to write, type this out all the time. The African child show Don Stephen MacDougall was a friend of the Cunningham family. A friend, not an acquaintance, not just someone who rented their 
Oh god. Ren did some a bed up on. Nothing like that, it was a friend. Was a friend of the Cunningham family and resided on the family property in a cabin cab over camper. Right? MacDougall had access to the interior of the child's victim's home. The affiant shall show that the that video footage and cell phone data places MacDougall at three locations of interest. Evidence in connection with the defendant and the child victim was located at two of these locations and recovered. One of these locations is the Trinity River near State Highway 59 South, where Audrey's body was later located. That's why I say I, I think it was in there that she was, he put her body there. I think he assaulted her on a live jet and placed her in that river at that bridge, underneath that bridge. Not further up where the bag was found. You know what I mean? His phone pinged there. So they know he was there. He'd been there. Right. Uh, Affiliant shall show throughout the investigation, investigators were able to determine through cell phone data, video footage, and other forensic evidence MacDougall lied about his whereabouts and activities on the day of February 15, 2024. Shall sh further show that upon recovery of the child victim's body, law enforcement discovered a large rock tied to the child victim's body. The rope used was consistent with rope that was observed in MacDougall's vehicle on a traffic stop two days earlier right that was when they first arrested him for the assault right a brilliant shall further show that through investigation there is sufficient evidence to show that on the date of february the 15 2024 safe defendant don stephen mcdougall committed the offence of capital murder. Right. Then we've got the warrant of arrest, the state of Texas. To any peace officer of the state of Texas greeting, you are hereby commanded, and now this was issued on the 20th of the 2nd. And, right, and it said on the 15 she went missing right so five days after she went missing this was a issued you are hereby commanded to arrest don stephen mcdougall if found to be in the county and bring it before me a magistrate in and for polk county texas in Stanter, then there, then a neck and then a neck answer the state of Texas for an offence against the law laws of said state to which capital murder murder of person ten years of age to fifteen years of age of which offence John Stephen McDougall is accused by the written complaint under oath of Detective Kayla Kempley filed before me. Hearing fail not, but of this writ, make you return, showing how you uh, how you have executed the same. Right? Witness of official signature, Jamie Richardson, Magistrate, Polk County, Texas. No bond. Right? Stephen McDougall. Didn't say anything else there. Right. This is the same again. Whereas that was like a copy. What is this, the original? To any peace officer, if I had to be in your canteen, being, yeah. Yeah, that's the same, 
exact the same again as to what was said up there. But this is like where they've got Phil Gee. Not that. Um, they've got it here. Just got it in normal black writing. Right? So he's not getting out. And okay, I believe the mother, she don't want this. Right? She don't want this capital murder. She wants him to suffer, but he won't suffer in jail. Well, he might. A bit of karma. He might. But like I said, he'll have contact with his family. He'll have con he has um, use of uh, tablets, laptops. You know what I mean? He'll get to watch TV. He'll get to mingle. Right? He'll be able to do all that. Yeah? And believe it or not, as sick as it sounds, there will be women who will be swarming after him. Sick, I know. But you can imagine, there'll be women, oh, I love him, I love him. It's sick. They're just sick in the head. Sorry. So, um... You'd be able to get in touch with them via the internet, message them, write them letters. You know what I mean? Okay, you won't be able to nip down to the shop or to the pub or to the donut shop or to wherever. But it's still alive. Whereas poor Audrey is not. So why should he? And I don't think it should be 10, 20 or 30 years down the line. I think if he's just, if he's been given the death penalty, right, there should be no appeals. No appeals. should be no appeals. Even though we, we know there is. It can take years, years and years and years, but appeals to run out. Right? So... He'll appeal it and appeal it and appeal it. Right up to the 11th hour. But I don't think appeals should be made. Not in this case anyway. Not in this case. I'm the sort of person who don't, who like that mother, I, I believe, like, unless they've actually got DNA, Physical proof that he done this, right? Done this horrendous crime. Then it shouldn't be death. It shouldn't be on the death row, right? But because he put the body in water, there will be no DNA. And don't forget, she'd been in there, what, five days before the found her? Five, six days? Something like that. About five days, I think it was, before the found her. So, DNA is gone. Even the clothing that was found on the east side was wet. So any day on that is very, very sleep. But I've never thought of it as the way the mother said, how he killed his, her daughter, then planned to kill her and put her in the water as well. And then people would be looking for a mother and a daughter who no longer was living. But they wouldn't know that. So I don't know. I really don't know. But I think he was setting her up for something. He was trying to set up for something. Perhaps he's trying to set her up for the murder. You know what I mean? It's hard to say. Anyway, what else have we got? So we've read that. 
Say now. Say now. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Where was he? This. We're going to go back. Oh, God, get up there. Right, we're going to go back now to this. Right. And listen to what some of them say. Because uh, they even... There's a clip they show. And I did find it early, but then when I come to find it again, I couldn't find it. And it's heartbreaking. It's the a video someone took of the procession of Audrey Cunningham's body being trans moved from the mortuary to the chapel of rest or whatever they call it over there. And every like the police who were involved, the police, the Polk County Police, there was procession. The school bus she called every morning to school, that was in it. The fire brigade who was there and everyone who was involved in finding her and bringing her home. Right. So, let's show you a bit of that. Just the, the judge. Come on. JP wants to talk to you. Where's your call? Hold on. We'll put your smile on. Now, I know we've seen it, but I'm just running through it again. Well, come on out here. Well, no, 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 man. Come on, man. Don't disrespect me like that. All right, well, wrap up in that. Wrap up in the blanket. Come on. You have the right to remain silent and not make any statement at all. And know that any statement that you make can will be used against you at trial in court. You have the right to have an attorney present to advise her, to advise you prior to or during the questioning. You are hearing Stephen McDougall behind bars refusing to put on any pants. What a stubborn jackass. Now, Dr. Bethany Marshall, you're the shrink, not me. Bethany Marshall, high profile psychoanalyst joining us out of L.A. at drbethanymarshall.com. Dr. Bethany, I mean, my diagnosis is he's a jackass. What's yours? <laughs> Well, I thought two things. One, uh, well, the, the the officer just said he was being disrespectful, but I was wondering if he was malingering a psychiatric illness, like acting crazy to get a more lenient sentence. The other thing I wondered was, did he have an erection? And the reason I wondered that is he's already a child molester, allegedly. Is he also an exhibitionist? Because all these perversions tend to go hand in hand. So I don't know if the officer is allowed to say, but that, that was one of my first questions. Can I as ask you something, Dr. Bethany? How yeah. is put on your clothes? How is that some kind of stimulant to give him an erection? If anything, I think my diagnosis is much better than yours, Dr. Bethany. What is yours? <laughs> He's a jackass. Well, I mean, what? you know, and, and there's more to it than just that. Lana Shadwick joining me, high-profile lawyer out of this jurisdiction where Audrey was murdered, where I believe this little 11-year-old girl was molested. What does that mean? Again, I'm the one putting the perfume on the pig. It means she was either raped or sodomized or both. This girl, this little girl, is dead from blunt force trauma. And I believe she was molested before she was killed. Lana Shadwick joining me, former judge and prosecutor in this jury in this jurisdiction, now legal analyst for Breitbart. You can find her at lanashadwick.com. Lana, really? He wouldn't put on his clothes. And you know, a lot of people would say, oh, that's wrong to make him appear wearing a blanket. B S. That's his decision. If he wants to show his rear end that way, then he can. Yes, the Constitution doesn't protect him from his own personality. No, it doesn't. And he's a psychopath. I mean, anyone who could, number one, go the, the next morning and be a, at a donut shop right across from the courthouse 
The judges can see you out the windows. How delusional are you? Go um, house to house. You know, and where's, where's Audrey? Where's Audrey? Clearly the sign of a, a psychopath. A psychopath that murders, that uh, lures people in. Um, there's social media accounts that says you appear to be a nice guy at times, but he's a psychopath. But Nancy, he's also a very attention-getting psychopath. He loves the attention. You know, going to the donut shop, going from house to house. Of course, he's trying to draw attention away from him. But on the other hand, you use the term jackass, and I would say histrionic jackass. And that means somebody who just loves being in the limelight and loves getting the attention. Yes. And who is he trying to get attention from? Little kids. I mean, yes. that is what's so alarming and frightening and disturbing about all of this. Histrionic. You know, it reminds me of a little old lady that lived in my hometown, rural Bibb County in the middle of Georgia on a red dirt road. No matter whose funeral it was, she would wait till right before the family came in and walk down the aisle being assisted on both sides and carried up front. And somehow every funeral and every wedding was about her. That's how I define histrionic. It's just over the top drama. And it's all about you. Yeah, I can see that, but I'm still sticking with Jackass. Chris McDonough joining me, uh, director of Cold Case Foundation, former homicide detective, over 300 homicides under his belt that he's investigated or worked on. No, this guy, he's brilliant. I love him as well. He's absolutely brilliant. I found him in the interview room. That's his YouTube channel during the Koberger trial. I mean, the Koberger investigation. Chris McDonough, when you get a defendant like that, Chris, I had a guy, a drug lord. He had very violent. And the Constitution doesn't protect you from yourself. Guess what he wore to court? He wore red, bright, fire engine red leather pants and a bright fire engine red leather bomber jacket tons of gold chains and guess what the witness said about the perp that was selling dope that night he had on a red leather jacket and red leather pants i was so happy the constitution did not protect him from his own personality same thing here mcdonough guy won't even get dressed to see go in front of the judge they have to force him to put on a blanket to cover up his penis and his naked rear end it's just another slap in the face uh, to the system as a whole. And this guy always felt that he was above the system. Look how he played the cops just in that clip, Nancy, out by the subway. He's just leaning against the car, yes. you know, like he's having an everyday chit chat. I swear to God, if we said, if a lot of the YouTubers I know said half the words, half of the words that she says in her lives, right? We wouldn't be able to put it, we wouldn't be able to air it. We wouldn't be able to go uh, put it up on YouTube. We wouldn't. We'd be able to go live, but that would be it. We couldn't let it carry on. You know, he, he's an evil statistic, you know, or a sadistic uh, child murderer. I want to he's going to go down into the Liz, joint. If you like could that. put that up, and you, you also have video, Liz, from the other side. And I can see and just, you know, rear it all propped up on the back of that car. Oh, yep, that's it. And I can see it's so, oh, he's moving. But he just casually kicked back. Chris McDonough's right. He's not worried. Why? Nobody's going to testify against him because the victim is dead. He knows that. And here he is refusing to come into court with clothes on. Guys, take a listen to the judge speaking to McDougal. You have the right to terminate any interview at any time, and you have the right to examine your trial if you're accused of a felony. Do you understand your rights, Mr. McDougal? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you want a court court attorney? You're gonna hire your own. Nope. Which one? I'll get attorney. You're gonna hire your own? Yes. Okay. All right. All I need you to do is sign right here for me. Your charge is capital murder, and it's a no bond. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Joining me right now is Bob Price, and Bob is. Associate Editor, Senior News Contributor, Breitbart. Bob, thank you for being with us. 
I love this judge. First of all, I also want to thank KTRK for getting that video because I can tell you about it till I'm blue in the face, but a picture speaks a million words, a video, two million. Uh, so thanks, KTRK. Bob Price, I love this judge. She's like, here's a guy covered in tattoos, about to be arraigned in the murder, and I believe we're going to see sex charges as well. I'm an 11-year-old girl. He's buck naked. They forced him to use a blanket. She just keeps right on reading the, his rights. She doesn't care. Doesn't blink an eye. I love her. Nancy, I was I was told that he actually dropped the blanket in front of the judge as well. You know, it, it's clearly he's reaching for attention. And this is one despicable human being, and I. It's just disrespectful. It's just being disrespectful. That's all it is. Just being disrespectful. I'm using the term "human being" very loosely here. He's an animal, uh, and you can tell by not only what he did to Audrey Cunningham, but other people throughout his life. He was, he pled guilty to a charge in Montgomery County, just 50 miles away from here in, in December. And had he been sentenced on that case, he would have been in jail uh, and not been able to take this action against Audrey. And then we had other cases. There's so many times in this, this seemingly irrelevant string of events that all came together leading to Audrey. Yes, because every time the cases were uh, pleaded down. You know what I mean? They were pleaded down. Murder, uh, where one single action could have changed the course of Audrey's life and, and saved her life. And yet time and time and time again, Stephen McDougall was given another chance. The father said he wanted to give him another chance. He committed at least three assaults that I know of in, in the last quarter of, of the last year. Uh, I don't know what second chance this guy thinks he deserves or what anybody else around him thinks he deserves. He's The law enforcement sources inside the jail say that he is, is clearly a psychopath, uh, but they said he's also very competent to stand trial. Yeah, and I'm going to circle back with Dr. Bethany Marshall on psych the fact that psychopathy does not mean you are legally insane. Uh, that's like saying Ted Bundy was a psychopath. That did not mean he was insane and shouldn't go to trial. Guys, also with me is a renowned death investigator, professor of forensics at Jacksonville State University and author of Blood Beneath My Feet on Amazon. He's also the star of a hit podcast series, Body Bags with Joe Scott Morgan. Joe Scott, uh, I want to have a little reality check. While we're kicking around this guy oh that actually drops his blanket bob price joining us from breitbart just said a reporter reported that that he drops the blanket so the judge can see all of his genitals and rear end you know what it's almost laughable and we can kick around oh he's a jackass but you know what i'm sure there's other charges such as indecent exposure He's a killer. That's what he is. And I don't want to make light of him. I want the world to know what happened to Audrey. And Joe Scott, you've been in front of many a jury, as have I. I've seen them wince when I describe what happened. I've seen them literally turn their face away from a witness on the stand, a witness like you, from the medical examiner's office. But you can't turn away from the truth and excuse this guy for just being a rear end. Tell me what happened to this 11-year-old girl. Nancy, he put his hands on her. He beat her. He probably choked her. And then, then, at the end of all of this, he ties this rock to this precious little angel's body vis-a-vis -vis another rope that he had weighted her down in the Trinity River and left her there. And she's literally oscillating in the water. Her body is spinning around and around and around and around. And he drives off and disregards her. And let me tell you one more thing, if you like that one. We're coming off the heels of Adam Montgomery's trial up in New Hampshire relative to that precious angel 
Harmony Montgomery. I see a lot of similarities here because, you know, Adam Montgomery, he couldn't even show his face in court to stand, to stand before the court, to answer for what he did up there. This is the same pattern. That is so right. I watched that. I actually got all the videos of that of the Harmony Montgomery, Adam Montgomery's court case. And he didn't. The only day he came to court was the day that was picking the jury. The rest of the time, he never came. Right? Now, the prosecution are putting, um, I want to know, oh God, help me, to make he so that he has to be there on the day of the sentencing. So, they can abuse, they can treat young children like this, and then they don't expect that there is going to be any hell to pay. And let me tell you something, hell's coming with this guy, just like it did with Adam Montgomery, because he literally, he literally carried that little girl around from place to place to place, treated her like garbage, and that's what this animal has done with this precious baby. You know, Lana Shadwick joining me and everybody on the panel, please jump in. You're the brain trust. I, Lana, reminding me again of where I grew up in rural Bibb County, not even inside the city. As her body was being taken to the funeral home, the community came out in lined streets. That's what we would do when I was growing up and a, a funeral procession would go by. And of course, if you're in your car, you pull over and turn your lights on and turn your car off to stop the world just for a moment. And when I think of everybody lined up along the sides of the street as her body went by, it just it just breaks my heart, Lana. And this was that scene that you're seeing right there is the donut shop. So he stood in front of that donut shop nonchalantly, like I can handle this, I can fool everybody, whatever. And then this is where her body is, is brought back. It's right across from the courthouse. It's just it was devastating for the community and the streets were lined. Um, people are just the, the heaviness, the sadness, the grief that surrounds the entire community. There's, uh, this is only, there's only 5,600 people in Livingston, Texas. There's 52,000 in Polk County. The, the social media and the public backlash, I mean, it's just been, and, and the grief, it's just been amazing. Nancy, there's, an, there's another irony in all of this. Just like he showed his private parts to that little girl, he, he wanted to show his private parts to the judge too. So he does the same thing everywhere, just like he stood nonchalantly in the donut shop so that the judges could see him across the street. He was very nonchalant about molesting and killing this poor uh, angel, as we've been calling her. And so this guy is consistent in all of his patterns. He's he's hysterical. He's histrionic. He is a psychopath. And you asked earlier about that. A psychopath is not a psychiatric illness. He's not crazy. It's a personality disorder. And this personality disorder lacks a conscience, loves to kill, loves to inflict cruelty. They're very sadistic because that's how they get sexually excited. And that is the MO for this crime. And you know what? He's excited by all this attention as well. And that's the sick part of this upcoming trial is he'll get off on it, Nancy, just like he got off on killing a child. You think I care well, what he does behind bars? Have at it. You know, Bob Price joining me from Breitbart, Texas. Bob, I am now hearing, of course, we've heard from Cassie Matthews, who is Audrey's mother. But I'm now hearing the other side of the family, the grandma, uh, the grandpa, 
the dad, the bio dad, who let this guy live in the backyard in a camper and have full access to their home when the little girl was there. I mean, I don't let people just wander into our home when the twins are there. Oh, H-E-L-L-N-O. I don't know you. Uh-uh. You're not going to go traipsing through like a parade in New Orleans on Mardi Gras? No, that's not happening. But now, wait for it. They're actually saying that the system failed them, Bob Bryce. The system failed them because they did a background check and they didn't know he was a sex offender. B. S. They're saying that they didn't know he wasn't on the sex offender registry. That's BS. Because isn't it true by price that he got a two-year sentence for when he got in bed with that little girl? He was charged with enticing a minor and more. He got a two-year sentence. That's not a misdemeanor. If it's a two-year sentence, that would be a felony. Exactly. That would be on um, the criminal check. Which would have showed up on his record. Yes, no. Joshua Cunningham, it's you that let your daughter down. It, it's not, the system certainly did let her down as well. But it took me about 30 minutes of doing some Google researches online to find out not only had this guy crawled into bed with a, another 10-year-old girl, and pedophiles have a range. They, they have a, a range of age, very tight bracket they're, they're attracted to. And, and this little girl and Audrey were basically the same age within a few months of each other at the time of their attack. And uh, not just this crime against this little girl, but dozens of crimes through, from... That first attack on that one girl was in 2007. Right? So 16 years later, he does it again to with Audrey. You're telling me he's not done it since 2007? No way. He has messed about with other children and we just need them to come forward but a lot of them like they could take to drugs they could take to alcohol you don't know because nothing was ever done Two thousand one till two months before Audrey was murdered, he was being charged, arrested, convicted of crimes, violent crimes, and had no business being around any child, let alone this little 11-year-old angel. It's pathetic that these parents, this grandmother and, and father would allow this animal around their daughter. I, I wouldn't let him within 30 odd my daughter and now the hypocrisy of saying, oh, the system let her down. It's the system's fault because he wasn't a registered sex offender. Yeah, well, you know what? That was the prosecutor's fault for not pushing that and making that part of his plea deal, which it was such a sweet plea deal. It makes me sick to my stomach. He didn't even have to say I'm guilty. He got to say uh, no low contendere and he didn't even contest it. He took his sentence. And I believe that sentence, Lana Shadwick, was two years, which means it was a felony, which means you heard Bob Price say all you had to do was Google him for Pete's sake. You don't have to go get a, a, a rap sheet and pay $25 for it. You can look it up on Google for Pete's sake. They knew he That's had a right. record. Yeah, a ch possession of a dangerous uh, drug, Liberty County, 2003, 2006. Another possession um, in 2006, assault on a public servant, which is exactly what the Aryan Brotherhood, they have to assault a public servant or a correctional officer in order to be part of a gang. Um, he was convicted of that assault on a public service a servant and served time. And then the enticing uh, of a child out of Brazoria County in 2008. 2010, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. 2014, uh, reckless driving, and then another aggravated assault in 2019, and another thumb to the nose to law enforcement in 2023 when he was convicted of resisting arrest. 
this man is a man of violence. And, and well, how can John they John now claim it's the system's fault? You can find all that on a Google search. You don't have to go into official court records. And what I'm trying to say, why I keep talking about the sentence was two years and more, because a misdemeanor, which would not show up as a felony conviction, is 12 months or less. When you have two years or more, that means you've been convicted to on a felony, which absolutely would have shown up. So I don't understand why right. now they're claiming like the system failed. Um, uh, Joe Scott, I want to circle back to the evidence really quickly. I want to figure out, hold on, by price, do we know yet what the formal charges are going to be? Right now, it's a capital murder charge, plus he has the outstanding charge for aggravated assault, uh, causing serious bodily injury uh, to David. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot David's last name, who he assaulted in in August last year. Uh, David Smith. Right. Yes. David, sorry. You know, so his, he committed at least three assaults in the last quarter uh, or the last six months of two. But we know that right now he's going to be charged with capital murder. You yes. know, I'm waiting to find out if there are going to be sex charges uh, that he performed against this little girl. Joe Scott Morgan, back to you, death investigator. What is the hold up? How quickly upon a rape kit exam, which is an examination of the rectum and the vagina and all surrounding areas, in fact, the whole body, even though she had been in water, um, how long is that going to take? And if sperm DNA is found, then we got to make a DNA comparison, correct? Uh, yeah, we do. And they listen, they've got him. He's a known. So they'll do the buccal mucosal swab on him, the scraping. So they will they have that in a static position. You so mean they have the mouth. They yeah. Just reach in your mouth with something that looks like a Q-tip and get saliva and cells from the inside of your jaw go like a yes. COVID test. Go ahead. Yeah. And so he's a known, so they can compare that. What they have to, what's going to be key here though, Nancy, and keep in mind, this little angel was in a water environment and it sounds as though that she's at least partially unclothed. Remember they found her clothing on the riverbank right. here, which is significant. So any area, her vagina, her rectum, her mouth, it could be all flushed out. Here's my key, what I'm thinking about. Uh, she's very young, Nancy, and I would, there may be a chance that if she was assaulted through this rape, that there would be evidence of vaginal trauma, mm -hmm. anal trauma, whatever the case might be. And of course, that's going to fall through the forensic pathology. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. One more thing I got to point out here. This guy is so comfortable right now, Nancy. He's very comfortable in the way he's behaving. One of the things that's really piqued my interest in this, if he is this comfortable assaulting, first off, this other 10-year-old and this little darling here, I want to know, are there any unsolved cases that other fit this age range that are out there that might be missing that he had proximity to? Agree. Agree. He didn't just do this two times in his life. No. You can mark my word. See, I said that. There's got to be other cases out there. There's got to be. No way in his whole career, criminal career, has this been twice, only twice. No way. Yeah. On that. And one quick thing, I know we got to go, and I don't want to lose you guys, but I just want you to look at this piece of video that has been unearthed. This looks to me like Audrey actually putting a tattoo on an adult male. Yeah. That's what it looks like to me. Look at this. This little girl yeah. is working a tattoo pen. Um, wait for it. There you go. I can't tell if that's a man or a woman's leg. If it's a man's leg, it could have been shaved to apply a tattoo. What in the hay is going on? in that house why is this little girl yeah. and what jump in by the father even said in the statement they made that she was learning to be a tattoo artist 
a price. What is right. this? It, it's disgusting. It, it, it's clear. You know, I said a minute ago, it's Joshua Cunningham that, that let his little girl down and this grandmother. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people let this little girl down. But uh, I want to if I could go back just a minute to the, the public outpouring of support for Audrey. This procession that you showed a minute ago, that started in Houston. Uh, local police officers went down to bring her, this little girl home. It started in Houston. And as it traveled up through Cleveland and Porter and Shepherd and some of these other communities along the way, more law enforcement, more police cars, more fire trucks, more citizens got in this line. And then by the time it got to where you see it here in, in Livingston, there were hundreds of people standing along the streets on, on Washington Avenue and Church Street as they moved towards the funeral home. And, and there she goes right there. It, it, it really was tremendous. And then you have the little memorial that was built for her underneath the, what I'm now calling the Audrey Cunningham Bridge on, on US 59. Mm -hmm. Sheriff Greg Capers of San Jacinto County, where her body was recovered, told me that they're talking to TxDOT now to get some kind of a a temporary memorial uh, right there where you, where you see where the circle is uh, was where she was found and get a temporary memorial built there. I say temporary because they're getting ready to rip all of that out and build a new uh, highway, interstate highway through there. But um, it's the love and support for this little girl that they're seeing from the community. And I don't want to say that this family didn't love her, but they certainly didn't protect her. And that that's a father's number one job. You know what, Bob Price, I, I appreciate you being, you know, careful when you're referring to her family that she lived with. But I see it in very clear terms. She died on their watch. They allowed this guy in the backyard and in their home. So this Friday night, there's going to be a memorial for Audrey, an 11-year-old girl, 11 years old. And we want justice, and I don't care who falls in the search for justice, but we will get justice for this child. Goodbye, friends. Guys, thank you for watching Crime Online with Nancy Grace here on YouTube. And believe me, this woman here will keep going and going and going until they get justice for that little girl. I don't, I don't know if I like the name, changing that bridge, the name to, of that bridge to Audrey's Bridge or something like that. Because that would just bring, every time the mother had to go pat over it, she would, well, she'll know it anyway, but every time the family member or the mother has to go over that bridge, she's going, to no, know that is where her daughter was last, was last and found in that cold, murky river. And it's only... Because they found an item of clothing on the side and the boat went around and scanned the area and could see something, but they couldn't reach it, right? They needed to get the water lowered. So hopefully the speed of the water then would drop, that the current would drop a bit maybe, and they could get to her. And that's what they did. They got the dam, the people in charge of the dam to stop the flow of the water coming down. Just long enough for them to be able to get the water lower and then to get in and get, get down. And that's what they did on the, I think it was on Tuesday when they found her. They seen it on the Monday, but they couldn't get to her. Because the flow of the water and the depth of the water was just whizzing her around. So they couldn't decide where she'd be at one given time. So they needed to get that water lowered so that the tide of it, the tidal 
the speed of the water would slow down as well. And that would say, right, this is where she is. You know what I mean? Go down and get her. But I, I love Nancy Grace. I really do. And I've just noticed that uh, it's come up on my side, popped up, that she's doing one on Eli, Elijah Food. Now, that's one I'd like to see again. That one I will be watching. So, once I've finished this, I probably will go and watch that. And I might stream that tomorrow. We'll see. But, um, for now, we're going, I'm just going to put this picture up of her. Yeah. Right. Right, um, and we will, I'll see you out, say good night, if you've liked what you've seen, please share, please like, leave a comment, and if you feel like, if you really want, please subscribe so you don't miss out on any more lives, or any, any of my videos that I do. All my videos are on my YouTube channel, which I always put in the links of these, and onto my YouTube, um, my uh, X account. My account, my YouTube channel link is on my X account, Twitter account. So please come along, subscribe, don't miss out. Till then, good night. Thank <laughs> you.